Running backs are the most important asset in fantasy football, and we are taking a look at the truth of the best ones in 2023 to make sure you are set up for success in 2024. Don't miss a minute. Make sure you subscribe. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, it was an O sound today. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Is that for my Minnesota sweatshirt? Oh, you've gone back to back Minnesota swag, and I I don't, I don't get what's going on. Well, it was there was Arizona mixed in. They're just not on the not on the show. Not on the show. So not mixed in. So the last two shows has been Minnesota swag, just like I said. And yeah, I, okay, we want to know we want to know what that's all about. You Are know, there some people you're trying to support up uh, there in the Great White North? Yeah, my, Min- they, they're getting my Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> 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 well, you'd like to see Cousins come back, right? Oh yeah, that's it's kind of the only path forward. Yeah, I think people were shocked to see the twins because of uh, one, you're very outspoken about baseball sucking, about yep. not liking baseball. Yep. But this was what was this? A shout out to Johan Santana? Yeah, it was. That was a throwback to when I was a little Kirby Puckett, a massive. Oh yeah, World Series champ, uh, massive Minnesota Twins. What fan. did you? Well, then as a massive fan, you probably saw the Minnesota Twin that was just elected into the Hall of Fame. No, the, the oh Joe Mauer, Joe was. Mauer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can we stop talking about baseball now? <laughs> just pretty please. <laughs> Welcome in one and all. Thursday, January 25th, the Fantasy Footballers. Jason, we'll get back to the sport you know and love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me that football. American football. This is the truth episode for the running back position. So we'll look at the top 10 running backs on today's show. The last couple of episodes broke down the quarterbacks. And uh, look, there's some pretty interesting data about the running back position from this past year that we'll talk about today. What else is going on? Uh, you're well, in all black today. I'm, I'm in I'm in a jacket today. Yeah. I've given in. You know, we we good, talked about hey, the debate like you, me man. versus Mike. Yeah. No, I not good for me. Yeah, no, it's great. I I was at lunch yesterday and I looked at the lunch table mm-hmm. and every single person there and in inside yeah our studio is in just bundled up. I'm surprised they didn't have mittens on. They're all hoodies up. Yeah, they look real comfy. They are inside all wearing jackets. This what is kind inappropriate. Of, uh, what kind of pants are you wearing today? Oh, I'm in shorts. Give me I would that's that's a bridge too far, Andrew. <laughs> it's like the foot out the uh, the the blanket. He's just yes. trying to get like he he understands that winter is x amount of fabric. And it doesn't matter where you right. Like, that's right. like so it's all on the top half. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get a huge hat. <laughs> it's a big hat. It's, it's funny. Uh oh, new boy. dynasty podcast came out uh yesterday sensational episode we talked uh, a little bit about rookie tight ends and then some dynasty trade targets and trying to and, and not just not just targets because you know we have players where you're interested in trading for or trading away but just more the thinking about the concept of dynasty trading and versus the market and that kind of stuff so check it out did you do any analysis of my kind of perennially great dynasty team and whether I can just write it out again for another year no we did not Mm. because the time is running out for that team the creditors like they i mean they keep loaning oh man but but eventually they show up and someone's gonna go knock knock (laughs) is andrew holloway here oh i keep opening up (laughs) and you don't want to say yes i am (laughs) and he's avoiding it like getting served yeah oh i open up the mailbox and there's just a lot of pink paper in there and i just shut that mail i close the mailbox and i'm like i'm running this team back yeah um, yeah, check that out, the Dynasty Podcast. And, you know, during the off season when we have two of our main show, it's a great time to jump in there if you play Dynasty and uh, get involved. Yeah, and we're going to start breaking down rookie prospects here pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Started the scouting process myself. And let me just say, Marvin Harrison Jr., I think he's good. You think, oh, he, wow. you think he's got I, it? Wow. I, Jason Moore, think he is a good got, prospect. You, du- you dug in, huh? I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> – yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it 
boldly. Okay. This is a big moment. Look, yeah. Mainstream media okay. won't tell what? you <laughs> that this guy projected to go in the top five. I would just love it if Jason came out with his own dynasty rookie guy, and that's it. It's yeah, just it's it. just his breakdown of Marvin Harrison, top to bottom. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that the the days are coming. I mean, for those that are new with us this year, or those that may have forgotten, Super Bowl Sunday is when we begin our pre-sale for the Ultimate Draft Kit, the 2024 Ultimate Draft Kit. And as soon as you pick that up, if you get the UDK Plus on Super Bowl Sunday. You get access to the Dynasty Pass immediately. Yeah. yeah, so a couple weeks from now, if you play Dynasty, you have access already to the 2024 uh, Dynasty Pass in the UDK Plus. So make sure you pick that up at the cheapest price you can on Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, and that is, uh, what, February 11th, right? Uh, it's, so in February. it's coming quick, so we're going to have a lot of good content out then. We do have some news. News and notes from around the league. Well, I mean, the big the big news, uh, Jim Harbaugh, he's, back to the he's NFL. Back. He's back. The Chargers landed the the biggest fish in the uh, in the coaching pool. And he is, make no mistake, the biggest fish. Obviously, you've got Bill Belichick out he's there. He's the oldest fish. He's the, well, is he? He's older than Pete Carroll. Uh, you got two old fish out there. Yeah, but, no, those two old fish, no. But Harbaugh's just a great coach. Like, I know he didn't get along with the San Francisco 49ers owners, and he can ruffle some feathers, but you look at his coaching history, and he was great with the Niners. He was great with San Diego in college. He just won a national championship with Michigan. He's Like, I don't remember him ever not being good, and obviously his Harbaugh brother um, is wow. also a great wow. – Really good? No. But yes. Boston. Yeah. I was pretty proud of that. Uh you know, they're they've got great football minds and and I think this is a great hire for the Chargers who have been the most I feel like they are cursed. Just every game, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's 24 to 3. You just go, how are they going to lose a close one? Why well, look at the division they're in. They're going to be facing Mr. Mahomes for a long time and Andy Reid and and an up and coming uh I think Raiders squad. Denver uh, with Sean Payton. So you needed a coach that could come in here and compete. Jim Harbaugh, look, I, I think they got along pretty well his first year. They went 13-3 and three with Alex Smith uh, back in 2011. They went 11-4. and four. Uh, They went 12-4 and four and then 8-8 eight and eight the final year. The, I think it was Trent Baalke and him that didn't get along. But this was, he was the coach of the year. They went to the Super Bowl. Uh, this was back when Greg Roman was the offensive coordinator and calling plays. They were a very – run heavy team at the time in fact that during the four years uh we saw this morning kyle was pulling this up like they never ranked higher than 29th in uh in pass attempts per game but the biggest question for fantasy players is around justin herbert yeah it'll, and, it'll and, be higher because that was i mean that you're talking about colin kaepernick was running your offense for the majority of the harbaugh era and it's I mean, rushing quarterbacks, their their pass attempts are lower. And you had you had Frank Gore there being a you know a, a great running back. I, good coaches usually coach to their personnel, right? And when you've got uh, Herbert, I do think he'll he'll utilize the talents Herbert has. So yeah, there'll be a lot of excitement around the Chargers setting into the year. There'll also be, you know, at a minimum, like you want a balanced offense, and this team's running back situation is one to watch in the in the draft. Sure. Yeah, I mean, goodness gracious, what are they going to do? Uh, Eckler is not under contract, and they proved this season without a shadow of a doubt that they do not have someone behind him ready to step up. Yeah, and then we have uh, a new head coach for – did you guys already – we didn't already talk about Tennessee, did we? Tennessee? Oh, oh with uh, – yeah. I don't think we – I'm not seeing it in yeah. the news. No, we, we already talked about Callahan. We did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On this show? I thought so. I don't know. If we didn't, Brian Callahan's very fine. He's a coach. That yeah, was all the way back. That like was all the way did. back on Tuesday? I feel like we talked about this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't have a show every day. Yeah. All right. If we talked about it, I'm not going to talk about it again. The Eagles are hiring Vic Fangio to be their DC. Packers fired their DC, Joe Barry. Is there I any other news? 
I feel like the Vic Fangio hire is great. I, I personally think it's like you, you've you got – yeah, you, you, you seem to not care. You could play that he's 65 years old, but Vic Fangio has always run a good defense. Was it great for Miami? Yeah, Miami's defense was it, very good why this was last it so, season. Why was it so great that what? they fired him? I, I think they came to a mutual agreement. I don't think it was a straight-up firing. The fact that it was like, hey, uh, we're going to – Listen, Let you go, so great. and tomorrow you've got a job. I think I'll, this was – I mean, he literally went from like – He was going to be hired by the Eagles last offseason. So, yes, it makes sense that he found a home. I'm not saying – I think he's a good defensive coordinator. I would also say that I think Miami was kind of up and down. I mean, over the course of the past couple of years, um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't excite me that much. Yeah, it, I would be excited if I was an Eagles fan. Okay. All right. Different opinions. Mike has none. Um – any other news we need to talk about? Nope. Did you hear um, about the Titans? Ooh, tell me more. They got a new coach. Who? Callahan. <laughs> Still not positive we talked about it. <laughs> Brooks Everyone <invented>. keeps <laughs> saying we did. I mean, I guess you guys were not excited about that hire. That's what – now it's coming back to me. Yeah, yeah. you remember. It's, it's fine. Talk about Vrabel. Well, they, there was some news this morning that Belichick is not the front runner for Atlanta's job. We'll see – uh, if that proves true. Yeah, that that could be true. Also, news came out that Pete Carroll was making a push. <laughs> making a push for the Chargers job right before in contract negotiation times. Uh so I don't know. Uh, I I take pretty, all reports of those with pretty the Pretty sure that was a PFT exclusive. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. If we don't have any other news, we will jump into the truth. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! All right, before we look into the top ten running backs and what they really delivered for fantasy managers this year, we'll take a little uh, a moment for a broad view of the running back position. It's kind of a weird year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we had some injuries, but this was the fewest total running back receptions since 2014 that's a long time Alvin Kamara did his best but he could not catch enough league wide Austin to, Eckler did his worst yeah the, the, to yeah. reach that mark and and um it was also less efficient uh it wasn't just less involved in the passing game uh they they were not as valuable it it really has been like over the last couple of years the whole running backs don't matter narrative running backs not usually going in the first round of drafts obviously this year notwithstanding um it just feels like NFL teams are saying it is the least effective play to use a running back um and it is true like pat even passing to a running back which is more effective than uh, a rushing attempt is less effective than passing to a wide receiver or even a slot wide receiver so maybe this is a trend that we will continue see, to I, see I I I don't know. I mean, think about the teams that are left in the in the NFL playoffs right now. Like, Kansas City's gotten there on the back of Pacheco. Like, Bills were succeeding because they transitioned to a running offense with James Cook. The Lions have two formidable running backs that have brought them to this point. Obviously, CMC is the backbone of the 49ers. Like, uh, we did see a resurgence in rushing volume uh, this past year in terms of total attempts. Those were really trending down. Um it, it was weird, though, because you, you didn't have as many cheat codes at the running back position with the, the receiving totals. I'm curious on that overall rushing volume. Is that just – that's just running back? Total rush attempts. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, does that include the quarterback is my question. Like, Derrick Henry – Just running back. Had 280 attempts, and that's the lowest for a league leader In ever. terms of – yeah, in terms of, like, one player, what they're leading the league in total attempts. Yeah. Yeah, and even even this year, I believe uh, McCaffrey led the league in rushing yards, but it was like 130 less than Jacobs last year, and then it was like 300 less than the year before. Um, so yeah, you, it speaks to your point. Like efficiency was down. Yeah. Even though the volume among all of them was up, and with running backs, the fewest rushing touchdowns in the last six years, thanks to like 300 touchdowns being rushed in by Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's interesting. There are teams like, 
I think the challenge for fantasy managers with running backs has become more difficult at times because you have teams like Detroit where it's like, I think we'd all say like you can play Montgomery and Gibbs every single week, yeah, right? Yep. Yeah. But they're also both on the same team, mm -hmm. right? You're not, you, you don't have as many of the, like Eckler not playing a big role this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like workhorse running backs are down. Yeah. Josh Jacobs became less efficient. Austin Eckler became less efficient. And those are two of the like five workhorse running backs. If if you get rid of and then you lost well, Henry, Henry was less efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we are looking at the truth, Mike. Great games. I can handle it. Great games. Twenty one plus points at running back. That's how we're defining a great performance. Good games. Twelve plus points. Bus games. We're looking at fewer than seven points. And. Um, just to remind people, when we look at the truth of these positions or these players, when we look at their consistency. We're not holding their missed games against them, right? Spe specifically, the games that they did not start. So if they if they did start and they played and and got injured in that game, that will count against their score because you started them that week or could have. Uh, but we don't count. You know, if a player misses five or six games, like Jonathan Taylor scores really well in the truth this year. Obviously, you've got to factor in the fact that. He wasn't as great as you wanted because he wasn't there for a lot of it. Similar to uh, you know when we're going to go through wide receivers, Justin Jefferson was great on the truth score, but that only is when he's on the field, when you could start him. That's how we use our our truth metric. All right, number one, you guessed it, <laughs> it's Christian McCaffrey. Uh, and the summary of Christian McCaffrey is he's he is very good. Similar to Jason's analysis of Marvin Harrison. Yeah, yes. He did I'm, the deep. Did you deep, do the deep work? I just finished grinding the tape on CMC, and and I'm 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 absolutely in, guys. Wow. I think he's uh, I think he's talented. Honestly, when we were watching the playoff game, he makes no sense. He makes no sense how no one could tackle him. How he yes. just—it's like every play is like, wait, why does why why is he so much better than everyone? It doesn't make sense and he is better than everyone that I've seen for as long as I can remember he is so good and always has been back to Stanford he's just the best running back out there and speaking of how good the season was it was 50 percent of his games were great which is just ridiculous 94 percent good and he never had a bust game by our metrics so it was I mean it was a perfect season and to highlight it like since you know 2017 only Todd Gurley in 2018 McCaffrey in 2019 and then this year of McCaffrey has has hit that mark of 50 90 0 so it was a truly difference making pick to get him at 101 or two or three wherever you got I mean I, I think you just said a word that makes perfect sense it was a perfect season yeah right yeah, I mean, zero it, bust games, no no down game whatsoever. It, it, there was there was that one week where you weren't sure he was going to play in the Monday night game. Oh right. So there, I mean, there was some anxiety. Yeah, that it's he, like, like, you might have held your breath. Yeah, you did at one point during the week. Do I have to play someone else? Is McCaffrey going to play? And he did, and he was great. When you combine, when you combine the um, well, everything we just said about the running back position overall. And you combine that with everything we just said about Christian McCaffrey's unbelievable season. There's a reason why I think the craziest stat that we've talked about and discussed on this show for a long, long time, one of the craziest in the nine years we've been doing this, was the fact that over 50% of championship games this season included Christian McCaffrey in it because he was as good as any running back has been for the last decade and running backs were far worse than they've been for the last decade. So it just he was an unfair advantage. And and next year you have to you have to do the same thing. He's got to be the one on one. He's in a perfect situation, a perfect system. He hasn't slowed down. You don't worry about the age. He's too good. Amazingly, this is not the truth you really needed from us. Because I think you <laughs> yeah. might I think you might have known that. Yep. That Christian McCaffrey was uh really, really good this year. So we'll take a quick break and come back with Number two, Raheem Mostert. Usually you say we're coming back with number two. 
yeah. then you we'll tell you who it is. I thought it would be. I don't know. I wanted them to think about Raheem Mostert during the break a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. I All wanted right. them to think right. about, uh, like, picture before the season and what you thought the number two running back would be and then put Raheem Mostert's face in <laughs> in that spot because, I mean, this was an incredible season. Raheem Mostert had 18 rushing touchdowns on the ground in 15 games. The, the, the great problem with Mostert's season, and by the way, it was fourth in consistency, Ninth in the first half, seventh in the second half. So he didn't, like, due to the age, he didn't drop off in consistency over the second half of the year. Mm -hmm. He got better. The only thing that was really impactful was the fact that when push came to shove for your fantasy playoffs, you didn't have him. Week 17 and week 18, he was gone. Yeah, he, he helped get a lot of people to the championship game, and then you had to pivot because he was not available uh, for the championship. But um, you can't there, – there, I mean, he won a bunch of footies. So th this was a clear – if you had Raheem Mostert, you know the value because you drafted him very, very late, and he was the running back two on the year. When you can do uh, – when you can grab a great running back late in drafts, uh, there, there's not much more to say. The question is going forward next year with Devon Achan having established himself as an important part of this offense going into his sophomore season, Raheem Mostert being 32 years old, how do you expect the split to go there? Because Devon Achan was our consistency metric ranked number 10. He was great in his own right. Yeah, and Achan finished at 24 overall with the missed games, but a consistency of 10. Just to break down those consistency metrics, Mostert was 33% great, 60% good, 13% bust. Achan was 45% great in the games he played, 55% uh, good, 27% bust. Achan splits are unbelievable now it's it's hard to know share them like with us. just how noisy the data is because you don't you only have 11 games but and it's he beat the, the crap out of bad teams and I mean most running backs do that like Christian McCaffrey splits 18 against top half teams 25 points a game against bottom half you expect that because touchdown variance but for for HN in the four games uh, against top 16 rushing defenses, he averaged 3.9 fantasy points per game. Bottom 16 defenses, which that's the seven games, over 23 points a game. Now, I think that's extreme just, noise. Extreme noise okay. that you throw out, and here's why. When you only have 11 games to start, and two of the games happen to be against the top 16 defenses where you basically didn't play. Like against New England and his first game, I think he had one carry. Well, right in that game he was not involved at all so he scores one total fantasy point that goes against a top scoring or a, a a tough defense on the flip side you have his 50 point explosion against the broncos you know bottom 16 running defense well, so i i, I don't yeah, think the splits are that crazy there's not enough data there it is noisy but i will say this like this season in particular one thing that happened is when they were in a major game against a major opponent there was a trust level in Mostert that was exhibited. You also had the 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 question going into next year with Mostert. He'll be older, obviously. All players will. But this is getting to an age where you're like, hey, dude, are you going to be like Fred Jackson here and be able to just pull this right. off? And obviously a lot of his fantasy production came on the back of the touchdown. How many total touchdowns did he have? 23? Mostert? I mean, he had 18 I, on I the remember, ground. I remember his 22nd total. 18 on the ground, three through the air. So 21, 21. I do not remember his 22nd. No. <laughs> Was that in the playoffs? Maybe. Um, okay. But the other question I will ask you, Jason, because we all know that Devon Achan has an unbelievable skill set and ability. He spent the preseason on the injury list with a shoulder sprain. He spent seven weeks on injury reports with a knee sprain where he missed five games. He spent another three weeks on injury reports with toe problems and bruised ribs, and it feels a little bit like a fulfillment of prophecy to a degree because we said, like, hey, he's little. This is something that could happen. He also seems too fast, like illegal. <laughs> like, like it's not – like you're going too quick. Your body doesn't like that. So, you know, I would expect there to be balance next year. I would also expect most people to take a chance over Mostert next season. Yeah, Ooh, that's that'll what be would. interesting. I'll, I just, I'll, I'd be shocked expect. if that didn't happen. I'm sure that will happen. You've got a second-year player coming into his prime who looked 
just as good as most are. I mean, when when you watched A Chan, it was like every time he touched the ball, it was like, wow, there's another seven yards. There's another eight yards. You just can't stop him. Now, the injury concern is fully legitimate at his size. Um, you know, he, he came in undersized. That was why prior to drafting, to the Miami Dolphins drafting him, you know, we were kind of out on A Chan right. in as a in the prospect season. After he went to the Dolphins, obviously, I, I, th I thought it was a great pairing and was all it was in on the A only spot. Yeah, it was the only place where it was like, all right, I'm going to change and and he's going to be good and he was great. Uh, but I think it's legitimate to say I worry about injuries with him. But there aren't many fantasy assets that could ever go out and put up 50 points. Uh, and and he can't. So you're you're gonna have to take the gamble and decide what kind of fantasy player you are. Me, I'm gonna be in on Adrian. Let me let me give you the weeks 13 through 18, end of season six last six games projected over a year. Healthy, 181 attempts, 960 yards on the ground at 5.3 a clip, which is amazing and yet somehow way lower than what he started the year with. Mm -hmm. 70 targets, 48 receptions, 357 yards, about 10 total touchdowns. Um, it will all come down to utilization and the health of Raheem Mostert. I'd imagine the team wants to run it back with these two and do very similar things on the ground, even if the pendulum swings a little bit to the A-Chan production side. I think you're right. And Mostert is under contract in 2024, so you've already got these guys both back. Yeah. Number three. Wow. Travis Etienne. Wait, wait, wait. Real quick. Where will Mostert be drafted, do you think? Raheem Mostert. The number two running back on the season. Nowhere near number two, obviously. Um, th uh, third, fourth round? <laughs> It'll be oh, so going, it's going later. Yeah, I think he might I don't, drop I don't to know. like the fifth. Like I, I think H and will go in the second. It'll be so like the top of yeah. the second. Yeah, I. I, I and agree so with then that. Mostert, I'm gonna I'm gonna go late third. I, I I don't know if people will have the ability to pass on what he did. But the age, I mean, let, yeah, who just, would be in contention in that late third next year? Because that I, I want to tease this out a little bit. Like, who do you think the would running backs? Yeah, I mean, he's going to go ahead of Mixon, won't he? Uh, Mixon was the name I was going to yeah, ask. Yeah, I mean, he'll go ahead of Najee, won't he? Man, probably. he'll go ahead of Najee. Yeah, I don't know. I think Mixon will go. Connor or Mostert next year in ADP. Yeah, who do you think goes Mostert. higher? Mostert. People don't like Connor, anyways. That's yeah, dumb. probably Mostert. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it'll be those two are very similar. Yeah, they're both older and very talented and, and productive, and and not given the respect they deserve. Like Camara. Yeah, Camara will probably Camara or Mostert. I think oh, Camara it'll be Mostert. It'll be Mostert. Really? Yeah, I don't think I'm not going to be in on Camara next year. I'm, wow, I'm, you're Mister. We're, we're trying to speak for the public. That's what I'm. I'm guessing what they will. I'm do. only speaking for myself. Yeah. <laughs> I said ADP. I picked that up. I set the ADP. <laughs> and I've been speaking yeah. for Mike. This Andy whole draft time. position. Andy draft position. <laughs> not, ADP. Don't you know what that is? I I think um you so you think people will be in on Kamara. I guess I, I No, no, I I'm just saying that between the two of them right. I I don't know if that's a really tough call. What happened over there in yeah, there was a loud, Alley? There was a loud crash. Let's was, throw the camera over there. Who was that? Something mm. over this way. Papa Did you Josh. throw something towards the garbage She's, can? No, I kicked the bottom side of the desk. Oh, oh okay. goodness That's gracious. That's all right. Grow up. Yeah. Learn to control Be your body. Be a professional. All right. Travis Etienne, let's find out the truth because this is why we do this show. <laughs> yeah, it's not, a, it's not a happy truth. This was a third-round draft pick. Travis Etienne was last year. Finishes at three in total fantasy output and yet 14 in consistency. 29% great, 53% good, 24% bust. The first half of the year, he was the third most consistent. In the second half, he was the 32nd most consistent. It was a tale of two seasons almost, right? I mm -hmm. mean, yes. Um, dominated bottom 16 teams, which is why the first half was so good. They played a lot of bad defenses and a lot of good matchups for him. Bad offensive line, you felt it. His efficiency was way down. We never saw a breakout for anybody else in that running. You know, Tank Bigsby. Oh, goodness. Tank Bigsby is, I mean. Uh, the tank do, was do, empty. Do we just call him Keyshawn Vaughn now? Uh, I mean, that's that's the, yeah. the, the season you got, right? There are always off-season players that you're like, boy, they're going to have a shot, and then they don't. And at least for Bigsby in year one, that's what the case was. 
ETN is their guy. Yeah, I mean, you can be confident going into next year of Travis Etienne's utilization, that he's going to get enough work, that he's involved in the passing game. I mean, there's, you know, when you look at the opportunity that running backs receive, you love what you saw. When you look at the talent and the ability of a running back, you also love what you saw oftentimes. But, and we brought this up about midway through the season, about the fact that he was actually pretty inefficient on the ground. He was living on touchdowns that first half of the year. You know, when he had a four-week stretch as the running back one, the running back three, the running back four, and the running back five, I'm pretty sure those came on the back of two rushing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, two rushing touch touchdowns, and two Do rushing touchdowns. Do it again. Touchdowns. Say it again. Okay, hold on, guys. That's super hard to say. Yeah. Two rushing touchdowns? Yep. Yeah, no, say it four times. Two rushing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. Oh, that was pretty good. That I, was I could, so easy. Two rushing touchdowns. I closed two my eyes, though. I got two real focused. Touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. Da, 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 da. Yeah, okay. All right. You got, all right. You at home, play along, pause it, say it four times, see the if you can say it. The human torch <laughs> was denied a bank loan. Here's something I will say about ETN going into next year. He's just 25 years old. And the season for Jacksonville was not what anybody hoped for or expected. You don't generally find, you know, a top tier running back consistency wise on a squad that is losing a lot of games and missing the playoffs. It was a bad second half for them. It was I mean, the the Jaguars season fell apart. They they collapsed. And so the question going forward for Travis Etienne is a matter of for me, like when I'm thinking about Travis Etienne, I'm thinking about Trevor Lawrence and what I believe he is to this franchise and will they be winning games and scoring a lot of points or is he just really a a, a middling quarterback that's going to you know, be a Derek Carr level asset for the next four or five years because that to me impacts whether Travis Etienne is a fine running back option who you know will be an important piece in fantasy or he's a great running back option. And I don't think he's going to be a great running back option. Travis Etienne was drafted as the RB10 in the third round. He was worth it, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, as, from a draft value, people crafted a narrative as to why he wouldn't produce this year, and he did. So, we need to keep that in mind going into next year. But the second half, like if you look at week nine on, because this, this guy finishes the running back three on the season. That's how good his first half was and what he can do. But the second half of the season, from week nine on, he was the running back 21. Jerome Ford scored more than Travis Etienne. So, I, you know, Tony Pollard, who everybody hated and, and never really got it together, outscored Travis Etienne over the second half of the season. Jay, did you – I'm sorry. When you were talking about the, the two rushing touchdowns, did you mention the in nine games without a touchdown he averaged eight and a half points I, per game? I did not, and that's right. the point. Yeah. That's the point is he was touchdown reliant. If he didn't get touchdowns, he didn't have a good fantasy game. At number four, Brees Lightning. Oh, baby. Brees Hall, 22 years old, was a fourth-round draft pick. The running back 14 off the board. There were doubts around how quickly he'd come back from the torn ACL along with the signing of Dalvin Cook. It may seem comedic at this point to have had doubts, but that is what was circling around draft time. Otherwise, RB14 was not going to be um, where Brees would have gone. Now, bumpy start to the season. Well, the first month, the first month, remember, that he he didn't get the ball much. He had eight carries a game. That would have been a 17-game right. pace of 136 right. carries. He was coming off the ACL. So he was very underutilized that first month of the season. This This was very much like the mental picture of, like, one man put on a bunch of armor and was all alone and ran to face an army of a 1,000. Every week. I mean, no offensive line. You lost Aaron Rodgers. Um, the opportunity that he had, look, he, he had a ton of carries when the season was over, but not super efficient. 31st ranked offensive line. We all know who he really is. This season it was 29% great, 53% good, 18% bust. But we know who Brees Hall is. We know that this is a play. Like Brees Hall to go above Moster. Brees Hall yes. should go above oh, yeah. ETN. Brees Hall yes. should go above the majority of running backs next season, and I don't think any of us have any doubt about that. I, I wouldn't doubt if he's a back-end first-round pick. Uh, Brees Hall finished the season as the running back four without Aaron Rodgers with the worst offensive line, coming off of an ACL injury, not getting the ball a lot to start the season. 
Now, I do think that there are caveats to that going to next season. He's not going to receive the target share and the level of dump-offs that he had this season when the offense couldn't do anything other than just throw the ball to Brees over the line of scrimmage and hope he could make a play. That's what the entire Jets offense turned into. But you assume if Aaron Rodgers is back, and please, please, Jets, Aaron Rodgers is not the biggest problem on your team. The quarterback is not the biggest. Please fix this offensive line. This offensive line, I don't know how they're ranked 31st. I'm not sure who's 32nd, but that's embarrassing if someone out there is worse than the Jets' offensive line. They need to fix it. But it'll change next year. But, I mean, we you, he's 23 years old next season. I don't know if 95 – like, if you took the over-under 95 targets next year, I think I'd be taking the under. Yeah, me yes. too. But – this is uh this is a first round draft pick in fantasy, in my opinion. And you just had to take the inconsistency this year on the chin because of the offense and because of where the Jets were headed. Yep. Yep. And you're hoping that Rodgers I mean, more touchdown opportunity balances out uh your overall opportunities coming down. So uh, yeah, I'm I'll be in on Brees. Let right? me give you a tough question as we move to our number five running back. If you were in a dynasty league, and you had Bijan Robinson. Would you offer him for Brees Hall? Hmm. Jason, I have both on my roster. <laughs> you fell into my trap. Mm. Um, did I get you a championship last year? No, I also oh. have Travis Etienne, but okay. uh, no, no, I did not get a championship. Um, so basically, who would you rather have, Brees Hall or Bijan Robinson? I would rather have Bijan Robinson. And I love you know. I mean, I'm I, not on that side. My love You're for both Brees? of those yes. men. Please don't hear what I'm not saying. I I think both are absolute phenomenal. I mean, that's probably the running back. <laughs> They're two of the top I, four look, running backs in dynasty. I I think I've seen more at the NFL level from Brees than Bijan in terms of elite play. That's it. That's fine. I think I think Brees has proven himself to me more, and that's even with the ACL. Well, and he's right now he's alone. Um, they don't really have another running back there to challenge him. Well, and if if Arthur were the coach, they, someone else would have been available. That's true. All right, number five was Joe Mixon, guys. Consistency rank of eight. Fifty-three percent good games, twelve percent great. So you didn't get a lot of that, but you only had six percent bust. He was a value pick in fantasy because he went in the late third round at RB thirteen. And um, was even better in the second half of the year. Now we had the the Burrow injury. Obviously, I think there were a lot of doubts around Mixon. He was the, he was like one of the least sexy running back picks people yes. were making. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, I fell into the trap. I didn't want to settle for Joe Mixon. I wanted to shoot. That's that's for a somebody good way with to say a higher it, yeah. upside. But I wish I had not done that. I wish I had taken Joe Mixon and just accepted the free fantasy points. He was providing instead of uh, some of the variables players like, I don't know, Damian Pierce provided this year. Yeah, it's fair. And and going forward next year, remember, Joe Mixon restructured his contract. Um, he restructured his contract in a way that means he's going to be there next year. He's going to be their guy. Towards the second half of this season, Joe Mixon impressed the heck out of me. When you lost Joe Burrow and you want to rely on your running game, and the other team just can't stop you. You know, he, he reminded me a lot of James Conner at the end of this year. You That's had the backup comp. quarterback playing. You had, you know, a, a hurt offense. And, the, the you know, the opposing defense is no. Joe Mixon is going to get the ball here and there. And they're trying to stop him. But he broke a lot of tackles. He played well. He looked like he was playing like, I don't know, like an older version of himself, not trying to home run everything, but always just I mean, getting that extra yard or two. He, he really impressed me. Next year, I think I'm going to be – like in on Joe Mixon. The the run that he is on, let me just give you the perspective of the back of the card, so to speak, for Joe Mixon. Throw out the 2020 year where he only played six games. Okay. So that means since 2018, every healthy year he's had. RB 9, 13, 3, 12, 5. He's the only running back in fantasy to finish top 12 each of the last three years. There's so, no one else that's done it. Bravo. Yes. Yeah. Bravo, Joe Mixon. You, you surprised a lot of people. Um, let, let me tease it the way Mike wanted. You won't believe who number six is after this. Who is it? Yeah. 
Yeah, now the people want to know. I want to know. Is it diet? You guys both already know because it's right in front of you. Yeah, I knew before. <laughs> Acting. Uh, this is. Uh, dot- I wasn't actually a wizard. <laughs> See, right now they're going, just say it already, but I'm not going to. I'll say it. Diet CMC, Christian McCaffrey Light, Kyron Williams. Now, see, I feel like you just stole that from Rashad White. Uh, we, we called him Baby CMC. Yeah, but but so you think Kyron fits that? Kyron fits much. it yeah, much, much, better. much. Yeah, yeah. Kyron Williams finishes at six, despite missing a lot of time. He was the number one most consistent running back in all of football over the second half of the year. Number two on the on the season, fifty percent great games, eighty three percent good, eight percent bust. When we talked about Christian McCaffrey at the top of the show and we said he was the number one running back who had one of the most historical seasons, and you looked and you expected it to be like what we saw with Josh Allen where it was number one on the course of the season, number one in consistency score on the course of the season, number one in the first half, number one in the second half, except it was all number ones except number two in the second half, and that's not because Christian McCaffrey was bad. It's because of how outstanding Kyron Williams So you're taking him ahead of Brees Hall next year? Ooh. I would take Kyron Williams. So you're Williams taking ahead him ahead of, of Bijan next year. Yes, I'm taking Kyron ahead of both of those guys. Okay, next so Kyron is Kyron's a, probably he's my a number first two. Round, he's a first round. He's your number two. I mean, I'm taking CMC as far as at at the running back position. Yeah. yeah. I think you've got to go Kyron next. He he was a revelation, and outside of missing games, he was unstoppable. That he never faced stacked boxes because he's got a coach that schemes his players open. This offense looks great with Puka coming into year two and well, let me, Kyron. Uh, let, me, let me read fantasy finishes for you. 6, 23, 23, 1, 14, 10 to end the year. Yeah. Just kidding. That was Cam Akers the year before. <laughs> yeah, that was. That was Cam Akers the year before. So I'm just bringing that up because Cam Akers looked like this for six whole weeks with Sean McVay. I'm not taking it away from what we saw in the field from Kyron. But he is certainly the beneficiary of a genius on the offensive side of the football. We need to see. Were you were you like, confused when I was reading those out, Mike? Yeah, I'm, your I'm, face I'm, looked like, real confused. One nine eight. We we're not reading the same numbers. No. The the Rams, what they do at the running back position in the free agency period and the and the draft will be, for sure will be humongous. Yeah, because if we get if we only get a backup caliber player or a later pick then Kyron's gonna feel safe and safe at the top of the Rams depth chart he saw 37 percent of the team rush attempts and targets in his 12 games played Christian McCaffrey's the only one higher 39 percent like Kyron was a true work workhorse running back and yeah Cam Akers had those numbers Todd Gurley had those numbers it's more about does does Sean McVay Want to go for with Kyron Williams as his guy, and if and if the actions of the team specify that, then I'm with Jason. I I don't know if he'll be at number two for me, but he'll be easily in the top five. There are two running backs ever to score 15 plus total touchdowns in 12 or fewer games over the last 40 years. Whoo, hot Pre- stat. Priest Holmes in eight games did, oh, man. did it. Oh. In he two, did it in eight games in 2004, <laughs> and Kyron Williams. Yeah, but you were I, you were gonna no. I, I I mean, Kyron is he was a centerpiece of the offense. And when you listen to, like, here's the difference, right? We weren't sure if Cam Akers was the guy. We knew that the running system for McVeigh is great, and and Cam Akers finished the previous season so hot. But whenever you listen to McVeigh talk about Cam Akers, you weren't sure he wanted him on the roster. When you listen to Sean McVeigh talk about Kyron Williams, he loves Kyron Williams. Kyron Williams, I believe, will be the centerpiece of this offense. Yeah, Obviously, Mike yeah. is right. Like, if they go out and surprise us and spend a, a, a day two pick or, or you Just know. Just watch out for the fifth round. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, they are good too. at picking fifth rounders. No, you, look, the, Jared Goff was productive with Sean McVay. He didn't want Jared Goff. Right. So, that, that's the similar thing. He wants Stafford. He wants Kyron, and Kyron dominated. And, um, the, and there's nothing to dislike. The utilization, fantastic. The receiving work, great. The goal line work, awesome. Mm-hmm. His success on every aspect of the field, like I don't know. The at some point he's barely twenty three years old. At some point, you you have to get rid of the draft capital, and that, I'm at that point. It's the Let, only not. Let's on him. let's move on to one of the most uh, 
valuable draft picks in fantasy football for the 2023 season. Extra fat CMC. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, this is I extra will sugar. I will defend this man because I was the only one doing it in the offseason. Yeah. Rashad White finishes at seven, consistency rank of seven, was 19th in the first half, fifth in the second half. He was the running back two in all of fantasy from week seven on. And um, very, very consistent, very, very productive. Didn't do it on the back of 21 touchdowns like Raheem Mostert, right? Like, he got it done. Um, he had nine touchdowns on the year, 70 targets, 64 catches on 70 targets. So you talk about just when you drop the ball down to Rashad White, he did not drop the ball. So th this is what changed. If you remember, we were going into, like, week seven, and you weren't even sure if you should be starting – Rashad White or not because he would have a big game and a bad game and a big game and a yep. bad and the bad games were not not even six fantasy points right. they they were uh, yeah. atrocious three he, games under six points in the first five games yeah so I mean it was like can we can we trust Rashad White he was very ineffective on the ground they did not run the ball well and even over the course of the season when he was awesome three point six but there was a clear and obvious change in the passing game and the nice thing is. Todd Bowles came out and talked about this about halfway through the season, like how important they need to get him the ball in space, and they just kept with that. Those first five games, those first five games, he was he was on pace for a season total targets of 57 targets. I mean, his fantasy value is entirely in the receiving game. That After that point, you know, he was on pace for 68 receptions, so he was just used in the passing game so much the from week seven on. He's a wide like, receiver for for all intents and purposes because his efficiency was b -b bad on the ground. So does Baker make the difference here? Yes. Makes a huge difference, yes. yes. If Baker is back, then I I think Rashad White will be effective again. I mean, he you don't need him to be like I, I see there I see there as being more ups as much upside to White as downside. Like I think some people would say, hey, he's gonna revert. Right, you won't catch as many passes. I I see you could be more efficient on the ground. He can improve. Like their offensive line was trash. If yeah, they, I think that's the. If I had to guess where they're going in the first round of the pick uh, of the draft, I would guess they're going to try to add an O lineman here, and I mean, that would very be very durable. That could be awesome for White, who who also I you know I I need to give more credit. I know he was ineffective on the ground, but like he surpassed all my expectations and looked the part in the in the receiving game. He became effective and efficient and was valuable. He broke tackles. He got touchdowns. He had an awesome season and, and deserves mad dap. The 3.64 yards per carry for Rashad White, that is the lowest for a top 15 running back over the, the past five years. His .7 fantasy points per opportunity was below the league average at the running back position. So he it, he's so difficult because he needs – everything to be exactly the same in terms of he needs Baker or an equivalent pocket quarterback who you know checks the ball down and then you need to make sure there is no one else on this team who I'm can gonna challenge be, him for work. I'm going to be a full apologist for Rashad White. Okay. I'm just going to admit that right now. A like, truther. Yeah, because I – look, he it's got – It's like Najee's rookie year. He got That's 272 like. carries, and we're going to make every excuse for the efficiency for Brees Hall on that offensive line. And we know that Rashad White – look, he, he got so many – he had games where he had 27 carries, 27 – it doesn't – he wasn't as effective on them, but they committed to the run, and he was their guy. So, yes, I, you always have to watch the depth chart, but this is a team that just made a run to the divisional round that no one saw coming – on the back of Rashad White. And the best part to me is that the the organizational structure is not going to change. The, their offensive coordinator is not getting promoted to a head coach. Todd Bowles isn't going anywhere. The GM isn't changing. Like this, Are team, you shutting the door for Mr. Uh, Canales? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I think he's probably hoping to still get a job. Yeah, you, you should. There's he, nothing wrong with hope. Everyone should have hope in their life, goals and and hope. But yeah, it's not. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. But assuming, I mean, that would be a big deal to me because right now this That's coaching fair. staff completely relied upon Rashad White, and they won games doing it. So I would imagine next year, like I'll I'll be in on Rashad White. Should there not be massive changes, and it doesn't, like I would imagine Baker's going to be back, 
and I don't think they're going to add some crazy piece at running back. So I think you can expect more volume because that's what that's what it was. He was a volume play, 342 opportunities on the season. That's incredible. Mostert or Rashad White in the draft next year? Mostert. Like, who do I want or ADP? Who would you rather take? Uh, I lean Mostert. That was how I answered the question as well. Because yeah. I think White will go ahead of him ADP. Interesting. As of right now. Derrick Henry came in at 8. Oh, Consistency man. of 11. That dropped to 17 in the second half of the year, 6 in the first half of the year. Um, here, Here's what you weren't used to. 29% bust games for Derrick Henry. You had weeks where he was literally the reason you probably lost mm -hmm. at least five of them. Guys, just I got great news. Yeah. Henry doesn't have to play the Houston Texans anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, they just <laughs> – they just have his number, as we all knew. <laughs> the one, like the thing you look forward to the most with Derrick Henry every year was you played the Houston Texans twice, and I know I have two weeks that Derrick Henry will win me my fantasy week. And this year they lined up to <laughs> both year, be year. in the fantasy playoffs. I remember the underdog leagues, the best ball mania maniacs who were just looking at the week 17 matchup the playoff matchup the correlation the comebacks all that stuff Derrick Henry was king because two games against the Houston Texans in that stretch to which he put up three fantasy points and four fantasy points you really should have gone with 7.2 points total against the Houston Texans insane yeah I mean you you would have been better off playing um his teammate Tajay Spears in yeah. that time. It, uh, Algier, it, Chase Brown. Heck, Isaiah Spiller would have been a better start. Henry was baffling last year because you have, you know, we have five games where he was catastrophic to play him. And watching him play in those games, I mean, he could get nothing, nothing going at all. And then you would have other games. I mean, like the – the week 18 watching him with that the touchdown run following the blocker made a perfect cut looked like vintage Derrick Henry so he will be very confusing of I mean especially with landing spot I mean is Derrick Henry a Baltimore Raven I that's probably the odds on favorite since there was at least some smoke of uh him at the trade deadline going to that team Dallas to Dallas, I mean, oh, you, baby. like you, I think Dallas. Is you the put him, horse. you put him on a high-powered offense like the Ravens or Dallas, where you know there's going to be a bunch of opportunities. Tony Pollard was very ineffective, but the dude got a bazillion goal line carries. Those go to Derrick Henry. That's going to be really hard. Those will be touchdowns. To, it's going to be really hard to turn down drafting Derrick Henry, even though there are like flashing red signs of you need to be scared about Derrick Henry for fantasy football. Yeah, it's a tough one. He's had a lot more tread on the tires than he's thirty. <laughs> like but this. but Mostert's going to be thirty two. Uh, yeah, Mostert's just and we're talking about taking him over Rashad they're both, White. They're both outliers, just at the complete different end of the spectrum. Double digit touchdowns on a new team next year is what you're looking for, with Derrick Henry. Yeah, yeah that's what yes. you're hoping for, and it, and it can happen. Obviously, we can't speculate yet, not knowing his team. I think the only thing we can really talk about is. On the film, on the field, did he look like he lost anything? Did he look different to you? And sometimes it, it did. Yes, sometimes. and sometimes it did not. I I think so. I I guess the answer you would, is yes. The way that I viewed it is, Derrick Henry's never been one to break tackles at the line of scrimmage. Right, like behind the line of scrimmage, yeah, he's a locomotive. It, he's a locomotive. You get him going a little bit, no, you you're making business decisions. But if you can get him at or behind the line of scrimmage, he's never looked good. He looks like he's right. the easiest guy to tackle in the world. Um, and man, the Titans offensive line, I, I, I think they were, we found him. Jay. Oh, was it? Yeah. We found the 32nd. <laughs> okay. Well this, this works out perfect. <laughs> so I guess my opinion, so the 30, I did not, they're the 32nd ranked offensive okay, line. Okay. That's what my eyeballs saw. Um, and so I don't, I don't think it was actually Henry. I think Henry kind of looked the same. Like you said, week 18. Henry, in season. Henry was reported to say he was really jealous of the Jets the, offensive line. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I, I I I think Henry still has it, and that's really all we can go off of right now. He didn't he didn't look bad to me. He just he looked terrible in those games where it was eight guys on him two yards behind the line. Just for the fun of it, you'd be more excited in Baltimore or Dallas? Because for me, it's Dallas. Yeah, I would say 
Dallas because I think there'll be more consistency. I think Baltimore, but I would love both. Bijan came in at number nine. Bijan Robinson, not yet 22 years old, 17th in consistency in the first half, eighth in the second half, finishes the year as the 12th most consistent running back in fantasy football. I have been on record saying, like, Bijan's season was peculiar yeah, in so many ways. Fair. And I don't really know anybody. And I'm, I know you're out there, but I don't know a lot of people that Bijan Robinson was the linchpin of your title run. He was, at times, pretty good. 18% bust, 53% good, 12% great. He scored four rushing touchdowns on 214 carries. <laughs> he had four receiving touchdowns. That is, it is criminal. It is criminal. Criminal to draft a running back in the first round at eight overall, and the dude has four rushing touchdowns. Well, he had three carries inside the five. That's on the that's on saying. the 2023 yeah. NFL season. I, NFL coaches, please take note. Please take note. Arthur Smith thought he was super smart and didn't use the players that the that the team drafted and didn't have success. And now that guy f -f 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 fired. Thank you. That guy. That guy don't got a job. I want that sound clip. <laughs> I want that to be a, in the drops. Um. No, it, look, Bijan, I think we know that the talent. Use your players. And the ability is there. Bijan is one of the few players going into next year that has a range of outcomes that goes all the way up to number one or two mm -hmm. at the position. Yep. There's only, you know, Mixon's not going to fit that, right. right? I don't think Mostert is going to fit that next year, genuinely. Like, I don't think that's possible. There's only a handful of guys that could be number one. And depending on who this new head coach is going to be, as of this recording, we don't know. But Bijan used properly will be a high floor, high ceiling, league winning player for your team, and he may go lower than he deserves because of the of the unknown and because we haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I mean, it, TBD on who the the quarterback is. That's going to make a big difference on to how the offense, uh, how you believe in the offense. Obviously, if a coach comes in and starts utilizing Bijan as a true workhorse and not giving Tyler Algier a ton of work. Uh, and makes him more of the backup as would be appropriate based on talent, uh, Bijan, I think, should have a phenomenal year. And, and in fact, even this rookie season, which is disappointing, and I would say it's disappointing for two primary reasons, the primary reasons being he was not given opportunities to score touchdowns like he should have been, and like the team had, they just didn't give it to him, right. and two, because of the first week of the playoffs. I am one of them. You say, did I yeah. win my championship with Bijan and Brees Hall? No, because in in week one of the playoffs, they combined for like three fantasy points. It was it was awful. But if you really look at the season, he, he was pretty darn good. And if you take out, you remember that game where he got look, sick and he didn't game. report it, and yeah. then they didn't, he got one carry in the game in the fourth quarter it, weirdly, and he just wasn't used. If you take that game out, he was consistency score of seven. Now, obviously, you played him that week. So we don't right. have him in there, but I'm just saying that wasn't his performance or he, fault. He, that was Arthur Smith not reporting an injury. He very rarely busted, and um, he just broke some hearts. and And the other thing I'll say here's here's going to be the defining characteristic to me. It's not going to just be the fact that Arthur Smith is gone. It's going to be who the quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons is. Yeah, yeah. I agree. If you look at Bijan Robinson's utilization in the passing game, guys, it was elite. It was elite, but what I what I was getting in terms of volume, yes, but he caught fifty eight of his eighty six targets. Mike, Rashad White just caught sixty four of seventy. Okay, how do you not? I mean, and that's you, not Bijan dropping uh, thirty balls. That's, you, you remember some of those catches where he's catching the ball behind yeah. his back. <laughs> that is a quarterback problem. The quarterback gives you the chance to get on the goal line. The quarterback gives you the ball in an area where you can do something. Fifty eight of eighty six targets is not the number. Uh, that is proportionate to his talent and ability, I think we'd all agree that if he was in the Rashad White role in Tampa this year, same exact work. As Rashad White? Oh, as, as Rashad he, White. He would have been the running back 70 too. targets and the 272 yeah. carries is a different ball game. Bijan would have been the RB2. Yeah. Yep. So um, to me, that is a quarterback problem. Don't overemphasize just the head coach, right? Come on, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> Come on down. Well, I mean, you might be dealing with um, 
some very interesting other names. I got a name for Atlanta. you. Russell? I got a name for you. Ooh. Oh, say it. Matt oh. Ryan. Oh, get, get, get out of here, you <laughs> monster. I wanted you to say Joe Flacco. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. No. okay, yeah, that'd be great. I, I mean, Russell Wilson? No. Maybe. No, 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 no. I'd take Russell over over Desmond Ritter. Sure, I'm not saying he's not an upgrade, but we're having fun here. Oh, I talk about hope. It's crazy I'm not that you would think. Russell Wilson. Listen, listen. You don't want Joe Flacco. You think you do. You don't. I think I do. No, you want him for four games. He's good for four. He's a car with the tread that will last for four games. I he's mean, the, he's the donut. He's just he's not. Like the, you can replace us, and you could drive. Just don't. Yeah, don't he's go the, far. He's the spare tire. Yeah. On the, the you don't want that. I don't think at that age the amount of interceptions and turnovers. I don't think you do, but we'll we'll find out. Um, well, don't get, don't hear what I'm not saying. The Falcons don't want him. I want him. The turnovers are great for fantasy. Yeah, yeah. I the shoe man. The shoe drops for Joe. At number ten, we'll round out this episode with Jameer Gibbs, and then we'll talk about David Montgomery, who finished at thirteen. So ten and thirteen, uh, consistency rank very different between them. Gibbs was the higher finisher, but at a sixteen. Uh, consist in terms of the consistency rank. Montgomery finished at 13, but was a uh, number five in consistency. So, uh, you know, we know what the ceiling is for Jameer Gibbs. He had 182 rushing attempts and scored 10 times on those. He is so good. He's so good. I mean, when you see him in space, uh, he's, his speed is just outstanding. And, you know, going into next year, he should should be even better. And I, I do think he will be great for fantasy. I do think he will be the wrong value pick in this backfield. And I will be all in on David Montgomery. But um, Interesting. That's yeah. that's the angle you're taking that's, here. That's where I'm at, yeah. I mean, it, you see it in the consistency score, right? Like, obviously, David Montgomery missed some games. But he was more consistent. Just never busted. Always gets the goal line work. And one of his bad games was the game he got injured in where he only played 26% of snaps. I think this will be a very, very interesting debate next year because it's hard to argue with, you know, uh, a season where Jameer Gibbs missed some time and still ended up with 71 targets in the passing game. I mean, Gibbs uh, will Montgomery be Montgomery had 24 targets. Gibbs like, will probably be like a first rounder though, right? No, I you don't, don't think, think so. Second? Early second. Second round. Right, right, I understand right what you're saying. You're, you're saying you'd take the value. I... I think it's going to be team dependent for me on what you need, right? Like there are there are um, situations where I, I think David Montgomery may end up in somewhat of a who who did you just bring up that was if he didn't score he didn't produce. I mean, Etienne. the Travis Etienne situation. That could like be. That could be. I think that that could be a little bit of the problem. You saw Montgomery from week twelve on. You know, it was it was good, but not league like week winning, right? And then Gibbs had a couple week winning weeks, so it'll be a really interesting dance. I mean, obviously, if they both both cost the same for yeah, me to okay. acquire, I'm you. taking I Gibbs. Yeah. I, I just think I think David Montgomery will fall down draft boards worried that, oh, he's going to be completely usurped no, by you could Gibbs. Be right there. And yeah. he's not going to be usurped. I mean, he's he's going to get goal line work just and be a big part him. of this offense. Yeah, they just paid him. Uh, 90% of his fantasy points came on the ground. Montgomery. Montgomery. Yeah. Oof, you don't like hearing that. That's that's kind of that's kind of wild. I mean, that is um, – I don't know. Like Najee was better in the second half, right? No, oh, maybe. No, and second half is Najee's time. That's yeah. usually when Jeez. he's when yeah. he shines. Once you've given up, yes. Once you've given once up he's on Najee, beating like, you into a all right. pulp. Najee, they're talking about uh, moving on from you again. He's like, oh man. All right. I guess I'll all get right. it together. I mean, I'll try. Mon Monty was a perfectly proportional seven percent great, seven percent bust, sixty four percent good. Yeah, he's just that's he's tried and true. He he was. As as someone who had him on a couple teams, I I loved him as my running back too. I just knew I'm getting double digit points from him. Yeah, no, that that's fair. You had that experience um, with him on your team. Um, he was the pass blocker that they trusted too early in the year. We'll see if that is a transition that happens at any point. Elite role inside the twenty, like you said, you know he's getting those opportunities as long as the offense stays consistent and upper echelon, which it should be, right? Should, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um. The, but man, Gibbs Gibbs is one of those players where like if Montgomery went down, Gibbs could be the number one running back on the year for sure. The 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 scoring splits against defenses it's, it's interesting. Uh, Gibbs was better against tougher opponents, 
And then Montgomery was I – mean, like, that makes sense. I mean, mm-hmm. If you're just going narrative of, okay, a tougher opponent, maybe they're stronger on the ground, Gibbs is getting a little more receiving work, and then Monty was better against weaker opponents, just beating them up. Yeah, and if I want to if, – if you want to be tantalized by the talent, he was tied – this is Gibbs – for third highest fantasy points per touch ever Yeah, for a rookie running back. You saw that. I yeah. mean, you saw it every oh, time he touched the ball. It was, yeah. it, it was electricity. He is who we thought he was, which is great. Yeah, thank goodness for that. Um, I think that's it. I think we rounded out the top ten. We've got another Running Back Truth episode, part two, coming up next Tuesday. We've got a bonus episode of the show you can go listen to right now because we deliver one every single week. Mm-hmm. For all of you that support this show, we appreciate you. Join thefoot.com if you want to head over there and get the bonus episode every single week. Since the beginning of this show, we've been delivering a footcast every week over there, so you can go check that out. You guys have anything else to add? Uh, I'm ready for a nap. You're Ooh, very tired. Huh? Yeah. I'm sweaty right now. I'm sweating <laughs> in this jacket. What am I doing? I got great news for you, Jason. I could take it off? Yeah. Yeah. I might do that. <laughs> All right. That'll do it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in, supporting us, and we'll be back with another one on Tuesday, like we said. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.